Welcome to Lubar Stadium on the campus of Whitefish Bay High School. It's a North Shore Conference first place battle tonight as the Blue Dukes of Whitefish Bay play host to the Homestead Highlanders. Good evening everyone with Terry Kelly, John Weiser with you. Glad you're along for another edition of Friday Night Rivals and uh, a big battle here tonight between two ranked teams in the state. Uh, Whitefish Bay ranked number two in Division Three, and you've got uh, this uh, Homestead team ranked number eight in Division Two. Wow, they're both coming in with three and one records. The difference being Homestead lost last week, so they're one and one in the conference. Whitefish Bay sitting there atop two and zero. Oh. Tonight has a lot to do with what's going to happen down the road. It certainly does, and I would think we're going to see a very hungry Highlander team based on what we saw at practice this week. Right. Uh, they lost in a rather strange way last week. Two pooch kickoffs helped set up Slinger for two touchdowns. Before they knew it, they were behind by two scores. And as they say, you need all three phases of that game to uh, come together. They had, certainly had the offensive numbers. Defense played well, but it, as you said, those two plays really turned that whole game around. Yeah, whether that was by plan or by accident doesn't really matter. Got to be able to handle those situations. Whitefish Bay coming off a nice win over a uh, rejuvenated Nicolay squad, and uh, that was an impressive victory last week, given all the uh, hype around Nicolay's resurgence. Right, you know, two schools, neighboring districts, and they really needed to kind of go out Whitefish Bay and establish themselves as the conference leader. And as of course we, we go to practice and we, we prep for this week, this is a really even matchup, I think, tonight. Right, and these are rivals. Uh, they, you know, you ask both schools, you know, who's your big rival? They name each other. Time now to take a look at the players we're going to keep an eye on here tonight. We're going to start first with the Highlanders. Well, in the backfield, Joe Ullman rushed for well over 1,000 yards last year, leading ground gainer again this year. Well, if you're going to run the ball, you better have a good offensive line. Well, Drew Barranco is at the center. He makes all the line calls, sets up the offensive line schemes. Then a pair of juniors on defense for Homestead. Well, Drew Wilson is uh, one of the leading tacklers this year for Homestead. And Anthony Chung, a true three-sport athlete, only a junior, but he has been a real pleasant surprise to the coaching staff. Whitefish Bay, you know they could run the football. That's because they've got an outstanding offensive lineman. Well, Joe Brunner, everybody knows about him. All-State, one of the top 60 players in the nation, according to ranking, committed to Wisconsin. Caleb Bowers on that offensive line as well. Same job for uh, Whitefish Bay that uh, the center has for Homestead. He makes the blocking calls, sets everything up. Reed Jamerson on defense. He had the lineman's dream last week, 57-yard return for a touchdown. Scooped that up and went in. A little bit undersized, but they say tremendously quick and very tough. Nick Jornt. Linebacker of the year last year in the North Shore Conference really brings it when he comes in. Mike will be back. He'll have the coaches when we return to Lubar Stadium right after this. This is John. Check one, two, one, two. Check. Terry, check your mic. North Shore Battle Conference, Homestead Highlanders versus the Whitefish Bay Blue Dukes. Okay.
Welcome to the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week presented by Landmark Credit Union. We're live at Whitefish Bay High School as Whitefish Bay takes on Homestead in the North Shore Conference Showdown. Hi, thanks for joining us. I'm Mike McGivern, joined by the two head coaches tonight's game. Drake Zortman from Homestead, Jake Walter from Whitefish Bay. Jake, let's start with you. Look, a year or two years ago we were here and you said, look, if I can put the uniform on one more time, I might want to play Homestead. This is a good rivalry game, really competitive. You guys look forward to this one. Yeah, our kids have always um, looked forward to playing uh, Homestead growing up. Um, that's one of the things they've always talked about. They were always the conference champion, all, always the uh, league leader. Everyone's always chasing them. They're a class act. They do everything right. Um, and that's kind of like what we want to that's what we wanted to become, and we feel like we've gotten to that point. And, uh, yeah, when you can play a team with that high quality, you, you just love to have that opportunity. No doubt. Drake, you guys uh, started out great. Uh, I slipped up a little bit last week uh, to a pretty good slinger team. Wondering how the week of practice was for you guys. Uh, kids were focused. Um, I thought had a nice week of prep. Of course, you know, Whitefish Bay hasn't lost a North Shore game in a better part of two calendar years, so we're going to have our hands full. Not that you were studying that at all. Just happen to notice? I, I don't know. I like looking at the history of games. <laughs> That's awesome. Hey, Jake, I had one of your players on earlier on my, my radio show. And uh, Joe Brenner's a really good kid. And, and you said, look, he might be a kid that once in a career that you get a chance to coach. He's going to Wisconsin. And when I had him on, I said, look, would you consider yourself a finesse, finesse lineman or a mauler? He said, no, I like to maul. And uh, just a really good kid. Um, you're going to miss him, and he's been with you a long time, but what a great kid. And I understand it's a full team sport, but that's a good one. Oh, yeah, he's, uh, he's definitely a special kid, um, and everything we do revolves around him, and they, the kids feed off of his energy. Um, and, you know, Drake would, would, would know it. He, he was at Homestead. They've got a guy in the NFL right now. To have that understanding of how special a kid needs to be at the high school level to play at that you know next level, just Wisconsin, um, let alone if he has that ability later on um, after going there. But yeah, he it just it's just one of those kids you just you love and you you take those four years for you know you, you want it to go as long as possible. But we're on the last uh, run with him. But he's uh, he's all in. That's for sure. Hey, this uh, this conference, man. When we talk about this North Shore Conference, we'll talk about other conferences. Are they the best in the state? Look, this is the conference that every year, at the end of the year, there are teams that are playing up at Camp Randall or really close to that. Got to feel pretty good about how the team is doing in this conference, right? Yeah, well, the North Shore Conference is always very competitive. We play. There's a high level of football. It's physical. All. Good coaching staffs on every team. Everybody does their work, and the kids play hard in the right way. Um, I like to. I know we got to play tough non-conference games to get ready for the North Shore. Um, also, you know, if, if you get going at the end of the year, you're prepared. That's 100 percent, no doubt, guys. We're going to cut you loose on the other side of the break. Terry Kelly, John Weiser, the keys of the game. This is the Heiser Automotive Friday Night Rivals High School Football Game of the Week, presented by Landmark Credit Union. Okay. Perfect.
direct your attention to midfield and join in with Molly friends and as we honor America with the playing and singing of our national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through Whitefish Bay High School student Molly Franzen with our national anthem tonight to get things started here on our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Time now to look at the keys to the game tonight. Coach, uh, what do you have drawn up? Well, first of all, for Homestead, we alluded to this in the opening, they can't be caught off guard on special teams. Obviously, a run-oriented Whitefish Bay team, they've got to be solid against the run. And since these two teams know each other so well, they got to add some new wrinkles on offense. And for the Dukes tonight, what do they need to do? Number one, contain Joe Ullman, something that's easier said <laughs> than done. Their front seven has got to be disruptive, and they've got to try to utilize all of their running backs. Share the rock. Our keys to the game tonight in this key North Shore Conference battle. Beautiful evening here on the east side in Whitefish Bay. Temperature 75 degrees. Bit of a breeze out of the northwest at about 14 miles per hour. That's going to affect play going from left to right on your TV screen tonight. A nice evening. Uh, you know, a little earlier in the week, they were talking about a possibility of showers. Let's hope that yeah. doesn't come to uh, fruition. They get a look at the Homestead student section tonight, decked out in the red, white, and blue look this evening. Yeah, the Whitefish Bay stands are all on the east side of the field, and so... Both student bodies are at opposite ends. You know. Whitefish Bay won the coin toss, deferred to the second half. They will kick off to Homestead. Our kickoffs tonight brought to you by Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition, or MixApp. Back deep to receive for the Highlanders. Drew Wilson, number four, number six, Anthony Chung, and Joel Ullman, number eight. Ullman is the deep back. And the run up and kick by Sauer Millie. And that will into the end zone, taking advantage of that wind. And Homestead will start on their own 20 yard line. Sal Balistreri is the quarterback for this Homestead offense. 6'1, 185 pound junior. 16 of 32, 275 yards. As we look at the offense here, we mentioned Joel Ullman. The workhorse back, he is the leading rusher. And then you've got that great offensive line anchored by their center, Drew uh, Barranco. Terrence Reeves, the left tackle, is an honorable mention all conference. From the 20, first and 10. Ullman gets the call, picks his way left side. He'll get it out to the 30 yard line and a quick 10 for Joel Ullman, the uh, senior. Brought down on a play by Nick Lewis. Right away, they went to that left side. Terrence Reeves at the tackle, Mac Cobbs at guard. We mentioned Drew Baracco is making those blocking calls. Here's the Whitefish Bay defense. And again, a lot of players going both ways, including offensive lineman Joe Bruner. He'll play defensive end, first team all conference. Reed Jamerson, we mentioned, 
in the pregame as well up front. Again, Ullman struggles out to the 35 for a pickup of five. And it was uh, Nick Jernt and Riley Ronane out there defensively for the Blue Dukes. Now, when you look at the year that's gone on so far, they've had 174 rushing mm. attempts, only 33 pass attempts. They like to run the ball. Manageable down here, second and five from the 35. This time they'll give it to Tyler Miller around the left side. Miller will get close to a first down, very close to the 41 yard line. Nice run by Tyler Miller, brought down by Mike Rose. You know, sometimes you'll see Homestead line up in a true T backfield, two tight ends, but oftentimes they're gonna shift out of that. They're gonna give you a two back look quite a bit. Sometimes go to a spread. Officials want to bring in the sticks here for a measurement. So an official timeout here just underway here at Whitefish Bay High School tonight in this North Shore Conference battle. Gives us a chance to remind you our game is streaming live on the net. And again, my24milwaukee.com is our live stream this evening. We mentioned Slinger got Homestead last week on a couple of those pooch kickoffs, and I know that really stuck in the craw with Drake Zortman. He talked a lot about that at practice on Tuesday. Yeah, he mentioned, though, that when they had their leadership council get together, mm -hmm. that the kids did the majority of the talking and addressed what they thought were some of their flaws getting ready for that Slinger game. Third and inches here for Homestead. They get quickly to the line of scrimmage. Balistreri, and he did not get it. A good surge up front by that front seven. I think that was Jamerson up the middle there that got the, the first uh, lick on Balistreri, the quarterback, and along with Caleb Bowers. Well, got one of our first decisions of the night to be made by Drake Zartman to see what he wants to do here. Now, Balistrieri had his helmet off. I don't know if it was taken off by the other team in the middle of that tackle. I don't know if that was what Zortman was talking about. They'll bring the sticks back out, but I don't think he got it. And he is just short by a link. They'll use the sticks to spot on that far hash mark and they'll set up a fourth and inches for the Highlanders. Now they're bringing the jumbo mm -hmm. package in now for Homestead. A couple of linemen probably line up in the backfield to lead the way. All right, here we go, fourth and short. This is one of those check with me moments. Drake Zortman talked about that as well. You know, look to me and we'll see what we're gonna do. They're gonna bring Number nine in now at quarterback, Ryan Quinn. Now he's played quarterback for them in the past. They'll get to the line in a hurry. Jumbo package here on fourth and inches. Long count, and we got movement. False start. Well, it cost the New York Giants a football game last night. Here it cost Homestead a shot at fourth and inches. Well, that previous play, uh, Reed Jamerson, mm. the nose man, you know, he's 5'11", 190, but he is so fast, he slants so quickly. Will Van Lannen will come in and punt the sophomore. Nigel Cheeks creeping up to his own 30-yard line. Van Lannen into that wind, it's an end-over-end -end punt, takes a backward bounce and will squirt to the 44 yard line. Down on the play by Drew Wilson, getting down to down it, and so the Blue Dukes with good field position here, their first possession of the night with 9.13 to go here in the first quarter. It's gonna be interesting to see what Whitefish Bay lines up in. Are they gonna put double tights and try to hammer that ball, or are they gonna open it up a little bit? I know in talking with Jake Walter, as well as offensive coordinator Paul Rathkamp, trying to decide what to do. There you see the offense for the Blue Dukes. 
And again, a lot of players going both ways tonight. That may be a factor on this warm evening tonight. First and 10, Whitefish Bay. They will go with the two tights. They'll roll Jornt over to the right side. And they'll give it to Cheeks. Nigel Cheeks around the right side, out toward midfield. Just short of midfield, brought down in a play by Colin McGinley, the strong safety for Homestead. Yeah, Cheeks on the season is their second leading ground gainer. He's had 33 carries so far this season. At eight carries for 129 yards and two touchdowns last week. Game versus Nicolay. Second down and five, just short of midfield. And this is Don Bartolone, the senior. He'll hammer his way up toward midfield. Josh Braverman, defensive end there to make the stop for, for the Highlanders. Had the chance to talk to Dom's father at practice mm. this week. He said he should have been playing last year, but he was behind his brother. <laughs> Let's go quickly to the sideline. Welcome in Mike McGivern. Hey, guys. Hey, guys. Good to see you. Listen, cornerbacks uh, coach is talking, guys, we're going to come up a little bit. Stay with what we're doing. But listen, don't fall asleep because they're going to fake it and throw long. So make sure you're staying exactly where we need you, boys. Third and a good yard. And second effort close to the sticks before he is driven back. Drew Wilson there immediately. Forward progress should have enough for the first down. And we'll have our third measurement of this first half. In some ways, it's like looking in a mirror as you watch <laughs> Whitefish Bay and Homestead. Yep. They both like to run the ball. But I think as, as we watched this week, and I know you and I had the conversation, a lot of two-way players for Whitefish Bay versus one platoon system here for the most part for the Highlanders. Indeed, it is a Goodwill first down brought to you by Goodwill. You can shop Goodwill, sustainable back to school shopping for less. Yeah, Whitefish Bay has a pretty small junior class, mm -hmm. only seven players on the team. They've got a couple sophomores, you know, who are you know already starting just because of that. Fresh set of downs here from the 46 yard line of the Highlanders. And Cheeks coming around the left side. Cheeks with some room inside the 40 and pulled down just short of the 35 yard line. Crowley was there to make the stop along with Anthony Chung. That's a gain down to the 35 yard gain of about 12 on the play for Cheeks. You can see he has that quick burst when he gets to the line of scrimmage. You can see Whitefish Bay, you know, a lot of wing T principles mm -hmm. that we saw last week with Muskego. Once again, in this offense, it backs half the block. Now you get a look at that wing formation here. Now, or Bartolome, the single back. They'll send now in motion, and it's Bartolome around the left side, and he hammers his way across the 35 down to about the 33-yard line. Alec Prelstein there, along with Cole Ellsbury. The Homestead defense did a pretty good job of stringing that play out, mm. not letting him get around the edge. Yeah, Matt Wolf, the defensive coordinator, really thought his team would be ready for this run attack here tonight. We talked at length with him at practice on Tuesday as well. Confident his team can watch their keys here as now comes around, nearly coughed up the ball. They'll get it down to about the 25-yard line should be good for another goodwill first down. Drew Wilson there again for the Highlanders. We talked about how they wanted to spread that ball around, not just Bartolone, not just Cheeks, also working Jack Na. First and 10 from the 25 of Homestead. Each team with one possession thus far midway through our first quarter. Prior to the snap. 
Not sure why they stopped play there, but officials stopped play. Luke Wells gets the play from the sideline. He'll take it to the huddle here for Whitefish Bay. First and 10 from the Homestead 25 yard line. Give it to the wing coming around the left side. That's Jack Now. Honorable mention all conference brought down by Colin McGinley, the strong safety. And you get a look at the numbers on Naw, the senior. Well balanced in Cheeks with 272 yards. Bartolone coming into the game just over 300. Now with 225 yards rushing. So it's very balanced back there. And as you said, that might be their key here tonight is to balance that out. Give every back an opportunity here. You know, so far this year, Bay has gotten off to a pretty good start in the first quarter, outscoring their opponents 48 to six. Split backfield between Bartolone and Cheeks. Bartolone, nowhere to go. Good defensive surge that time by the front five. Krillstein and Wilson both there defensively. One more look. Yeah, you could see Prolstein push that pile back. He was second team all conference a year ago. Key third down here, third and six. First pass of the game for Wells on the run, dumps it out and catch is made just inside the five yard line. Jack Daw out of the backfield makes the catch. It's a 15 yard pickup and a Goodwill first down. You know, Luke Wells is only 5'9", 150, and they said they were going to possibly do some rollout or boot to get him wide so he could see better. He made a nice connection that time. First and goal for the Blue Dukes. We're in the Salvation Army red zone. Each time a team reaches the opponent's red zone inside the 20, they enter the Salvation Army red zone. Salvation Army doing the most good. Cheeks. Left side, pulled down from behind. Good play by Braverman, Josh Braverman. From the opposite end, tracked him down. They have lost a yard back to the six yard line. You know, once again, one of those smaller, quick defensive linemen, 5'10", 208. Not giant physical specimen, but I think when you're talking about Matt Wolf, he likes the quickness up front, the agility that they show up front, especially the front Five front seven, if you will. Yeah, they're going to bring those outside backers up, almost give you a 5-2 look at times. What are we doing here? This is the second time yeah. Brunner's come out of the game. I'm not quite sure if he's dealing with something. Is it something possibly with the gloves on his hand or? So I'm not sure. It's the officials that are, that stopped the play twice now for that same situation. Second down and goal, just outside the five yard line here for Whitefish Bay. Single back is Bartolone. They'll spread him out. In motion is Cheeks. And they'll hand it back the other way. Coming back the other way is now. Now trying to get the edge. Now to the pylon. Touchdown, Whitefish Bay. A little counter on that one. Set up beautifully. Fourth touchdown rushing this season. One more look. He got that little... Planted that foot and cut outside. Nick Wolf, the outside linebacker, got in front of him, crossed in front, got to his left, and took it to the pylon. Alex Sauer Millie for the extra point. Pick is up, and it is good. We will take our break. Three and a half minutes to go here in our first quarter. The Blue Dukes on their first possession. Punch it in, it's 7-0 Whitefish Bay, the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union.
of your favorite family-driven sitcoms are coming to mind 24. Don't miss The Goldbergs and Last Man Standing. That's weeknights from 5 to 7, starting September 27th here on My 24. Force the punt by Homestead, take the possession and march it in. The five-yard touchdown run by Jack Now, and it's 7-0 Whitefish Bay. Once again, our kickoff's brought to you by Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition, Mixap. And this kick will drift into the end zone for the touchback. Once again, let's head downstairs, Mike McGivern. Hey guys, you were wondering why Joe Brunner's come out of the game a couple of times. Referees are telling him, his mouth guard is in it incorrectly. He's not happy. He's not happy at all. And Jake Walter not so happy either. I had him on my radio show and I asked Joe Brunner, are you a technique kind of guy or a mauler? <clears throat> he said, sir, I'm a mauler. Always have been, always will be. Watch him. He's awfully good. Yeah, don't poke the bear. Don't get his motor running with a, a mouth guard issue. Alastreri, the quarterback around the left side, got it across the 20 to the 21. Good recovery defensively there on the keeper, Nick Lewis. The corner over there on that side, able to track him down for just a two-yard pickup. Well, defensive coordinator Aaron Shane knew he was going to have to rely on quickness today. His defense is perhaps a little undersized, but uh, we watched him in practice really trying to get the tendencies of Homestead down. Second and eight. On the carry is Wilson, or I should say Lewis. Jort the was there. And Ronane also there, the outside linebacker. Again, they put, they'll walk those outside backers up as well. Yeah, get that five man front. You know, when you think about it, a 3 4, 5 2, it can be the same defense. Pickup of one sets up third and seven for the Highlanders. Last carry by Tyler Miller. Two receivers here to the near side. Balistrieri going to throw. Now under pressure. Balistrieri going to be tracked down and sacked back at the 21-yard line. Reed Jamerson, we talked about his quickness up front, gets the sack. First team all-conference selection a year ago. Coming in tonight, he had 23 tackles, 11 tackles for loss, and six sacks. And a scoop and score from 57 yards out. I mean, that's a defensive lineman's dream right there. Probably telling coach, see, I should have been a running back. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Will Van Lannen to punt. Nigel che Cheeks standing near his own 40-yard line. Whitefish Bay should come away with good field position here. And this is a very short punt, won't even make it to midfield. And it bounces backwards and is downed near the Homestead 40-yard line. Yeah, the regular kicker is out for Homestead, Sean West. And they actually have his duties split up between three other guys handling all the kicks. Right now, we'll step aside. Here's a message from the folks at Landmark Credit Union. Nice game. I am Jay Leah McDowell, Assistant Branch Manager with Landmark Credit Union. Once again, Landmark Credit Union is proud to be a sponsor of the Friday Night Rivals Game of the Week on My24. We think it's a great way to show our support for local schools and for us to give back to the communities we serve. At Landmark Credit Union, our job is to provide great service to our members while helping them meet their everyday financial needs and long-term financial goals. We truly believe we are only as strong as the communities we serve. We have more than 30 branches, including locations near the two schools playing tonight. You can learn more at LandmarkCU.com. In our Glendale and Mequon locations here, LandmarkCU.com. Nigel Cheeks with a two-yard pickup, second down and eight under a minute to go here in this first quarter. 
Trying to take advantage of that very short punt of 22 yards. And now movement up front. False start here against the Blue Dukes. You know, when we talked to defensive coordinator Matt Wolf this week, he told us they probably won't blitz much. That'll be a changeup. I think they're getting ready to blitz mm -hmm. that time. I think they're looking to change up and disrupt Whitefish Bay's offense. So maybe not just new wrinkles on offense, but a little new wrinkle defensively tonight. Turns into a second and 13 now for Whitefish Bay. Ball back to the Homestead 46. And now a timeout taken by the Blue Dukes. Late here in this first quarter. A lot of confusion here to start this drive for Whitefish Bay. Maybe part of that is a little bit of fatigue. You know, mm. so many of these guys going both ways. Yeah, both teams coming in with records of three and one. And they got the heart of their schedule coming up for both of these teams. The later stages, both have games against Seaburg, Cedarburg and Hartford late in the season. Let's head downstairs once again to Mike McGivern. Hey guys, I'm here with Cherie Dallas Branch. Have not interviewed her for a bit. Hey, it's good to see you again. You too, thanks for having me. You bet, so you guys have a really big event coming up on Wednesday with a special guest. Absolutely, Salvation Army is continuing the fight. We have our virtual luncheon with James Jones, former Green Bay Packer great. What a great, he's a really good dude from what I hear as well. Hey, uh, uh, volunteers, you guys are always looking, this is the time of year, that, uh, with holidays coming, you guys are looking for volunteers. How do people get involved? Just contact us at asamilwaukee.org, asamilwaukee.org. We need volunteers, we're going into the Christmas season, and you know, that's when we do some of our greatest work. You really do, and I'm a big fan of Salvation Army, so thank you for what you do. Thank you all, this is great to be here, and we look forward to seeing you again. Thanks, back to you boys. Mike, thank you, and thank you to the Salvation Army. The toss to Cheeks. And he'll get it back across the original line of scrimmage to the just short of the 40, and that should conclude our first quarter here at Lubar Stadium. Whitefish Bay High School, the Blue Dukes on their first possession. Jump on Homestead here as we head to the second quarter, leading 7-0. Our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Yard touchdown run by Jack Now in that first quarter. 7 0 Whitefish Bay as we start the second, facing a third and eight from the Homestead 41 yard line. Wells, a little shovel pass into the backfield. Ball is out. It's still loose, and Homestead has recovered. Jack Now 
coughed it up. And I believe it was Braverman, Josh Braverman, who recovered the fumble. One more look. Shovel pass a little bit behind now and then had it poked out. And Braverman able to pounce on it. So the first takeaway of the evening goes to the Homestead defense. It was up around his shoulder pad. Mm -hmm. He couldn't quite get that ball tucked away. Three receivers, two to the near side. They'll spread him out, but they will run. And this is Ullman. Across the 50 down to the 47 yard line. Gain of about seven on the play, brought down by Jack Crowley. Ullman being very patient, getting over to that left side, trying to run behind Reeves, 6'5", 280. He's right next to Matt Cobes. Second down and three. Play action, Balistrieri gonna swing it out, completes the pass. That's Joe Rossman, the flanker. And he'll have enough for the first down. Rossman's first catch tonight, the senior. And it was Callahan and Lewis there to make the stop. Yeah, Balistrieri on the year has hit 50% of his passes, 16 for 32, 275 yards and four touchdowns. Gain of seven and a first down. Another goodwill first down here. First venture into Blue Duke territory tonight for the Highlanders. And Ullman, big hole up the middle, spins out of a tackle, ran right up the back of his blocker. That was Rossman again, his flanker, trying to throw another block. And Ullman ran up, right up on him. Down to the 32, gain of nine. And a little isolation block mm -hmm. that. Ullman, 6'2", 210. Very strong runner. Beware of the wheel route, second and one. Gonna pass, Balistrieri with time, goes back over the middle, over the deep, into the end zone, caught, touchdown, Homestead. Beautifully thrown to Tyler Miller. One more look. Good job giving him protection in the pocket and able to hit Miller. His first touchdown reception of the year, his fourth catch of the season. So it'll be Don Bruno, the sophomore, doing the place kicking here. I snap, they get it down, the kick is on the way, and the kick is wide right. 7-6, it remains, but they cash in on the takeaway on the Braverman fumble recovery, one more look. Nice little move by Ballesturi to get himself freed up to throw that pass. And again, put it in a nice spot, let his receiver go up and get it at the high point. Yeah, Miller has only had three catches so far this year. But uh, once again, some of those wrinkles, Drake Zortman's looking to work into his offense. Coming up on the U.S. Cellular Halftime Report, we will highlight this week's Scholar Athlete nominees from both teams. And we'll also meet our landmark Booster of the Game Award recipients. That's all coming up at halftime. Brought to you by U.S. Cellular. 7-6. Bruno will kick off. Back deep for the Blue Dukes. It'll be Cheeks and Lewis. Cheeks to the far side and Nick Lewis to the near side here. Again, our kickoffs brought to you by Mixap. Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition. Bruno with the wind at his back. It's just a ground ball to the 15 yard line. Picked up by Lewis. And Lewis takes it out near the 35 yard line. Good 20 yard return on the ground ball kickoff. Returned by Nick Lewis. So good field position again for the Blue Dukes as they try and regroup here after the fumble. 
stalled their drive previous. Luke Wells, a senior quarterback. We'll put Cheeks on the left side. Now on the right side, the single back is Bartolone. Cheeks comes in motion, and there's a penalty flag down. Again, that appeared to be some confusion up front. Second procedure call here against the Blue Dukes. Yeah, Homestead's doing a little stemming. They're shifting, although that time it was, you know, very early in the, mm -hmm. calling the snap count out, so I'm not quite sure why that disrupted uh, Whitefish Bay. Trying to read body language, and it looked like Wells, the quarterback, was looking to Cheeks to make that move on the motion a little sooner. May have messed the timing up. This is Cheeks coming right back. Cheeks bounces it outside to the 40 and out of bounds just shy of the 45 yard line. Miles Kelly got there to make the stop, but not before Cheeks picks up a goodwill first down. You can see, you know, Cheeks' quickness here. Pull that backside guard through the hole. Joe Stockwell leading that play. 14 yard pickup by Nigel Cheeks, the senior. Almost got that all the way back. So second and one here. Bartolone, they'll get it to the 45. That should be for, good for a first down. Chung and Hartley both there. Mark Hartley, honorable mention all conference a season ago as a tight end, plays outside linebacker and really like him out there in that. Yeah, they thought they might use him a little bit on offense mm -hmm. yet tonight too during some double tight end sets. 12 tackles on the year now for Hartley. First and 10 just across the 45 yard line. Cheeks again coming around from the left wing. Cuts it back. We'll get a couple out of it. Josh Braverman there to bring him down. Gain of about three. We'll set up second and seven. Now we'll line up as a right wing. Cheeks to the left wing with Bartoloni. The single back and they'll give it to the wing. It's now coming around the left side. Strung out nicely. Beautifully executed there by Jack Crowley. The cornerback chased him all the way down. Held that line. Strung that play out. And the coaching staff at Homestead very pleased with Jack Crowley. He got injured in the ninth game of last season. Rehabbed himself. Came back and is having a, a really fine year was Joe Stockwell, the left guard on the pole that time, coming around trying to lead his man. Another key third down, third and six from the Whitefish Bay 49 yard line. Cheeks gets the call and he'll be stopped. On fourth down, stopped at midfield, Drew Wilson. That's his fourth tackle tonight on a slow developing play. And Wilson read his keys, saw a little double team block, shot up into that hole, made the stop. The importance of reading your keys. Alex Sourmilly does all the kicking. He will punt here. He'll be punting into a bit of a breeze. Along with Miller. Tyler Miller and Anthony Chung, the deep men here. Gets off a nice driving kick. Miller from the 15 across the 20. Cuts back across the 30 and tripped up near the 33-yard line. Good return for Miller. Brought down by George Vandersleis. So it'll be 8-11 to go here in this first half. A 7-6 ball game, a missed extra point, the difference here in this first half. Back 
Balistrieri, the quarterback. Sal Balistrieri, the junior. A quarterback draw around the right side. Breaks a tackle out to the 40-yard line. Nicely done by Sal Balistrieri. Little RPO action there, a little read pass option. Jack now there to make the stop, going both ways, playing strong safety tonight. Now Balistrieri's carried the ball 50 times this year for 210 yards. Runs track in the spring, so he's got some speed. Second and short, second and four coming up. Ullman breaks a tackle. Ullman down the near sideline. Joe Ullman brought down from behind inside the 20 yard line. 40 yard run brought down by Jack Now, the strong safety. Could see him cut to the outside, had that ball in the outside arm using his track speed to full development there. They'll mark it at the 13, first and 10. They're in the Salvation Army red zone, brought to you by the Salvation Army, doing the most good. To volunteer or donate, please visit samilwaukee.org. Ullman again, not much there, takes it down to the 10, a three yard pickup. Reed Jamerson was there to make the stop. Kind of look carefully, one of the things you can see Homestead doing is they're varying their splits in their offensive lines, trying to set up a little bit more angles based on how Whitefish Bay is adjusting to that. Second and seven from the 10. Balistrieri, the quarterback, trying to get to the pylon. Balistrieri, second effort, touchdown, Homestead. Second rushing touchdown of the year for Sal Balistrieri, and the Highlanders have their first lead. That's just the strength there of Balistrieri, 6'1", 185, able, able to shake that tackle. Yeah, I got a good block out there from the flanker, number 32, Joe Rossman. Now they missed their previous extra point attempt, so they will go for the two point conversion here. Ullman fighting his way, and he'll be just shy. Stopped him short, brought down by Nick Jornt as we head downstairs to Mike McGivern. Boys, the uh, coaching staff here at Whitefish Bay not happy with the rest right now. They keep asking for a hold, and at literally every play, they're going, look, there it is again. Sure, will you look at it? They're really not happy. Jake Walter right now threw his headset quite a way. Still got a pretty good arm. <laughs> well, you could see some scouting come into play there. They did a little shuffle motion with the back. Today, when we were watching practice the other day, talking about one of two things is going to happen. Either it's going to be an ISO on that shuffle motion, or it's going to be a toss. Depends on how they take their angles. Well, the big play on that drive was the run by Ullman. 41 yards, 47 yards. Thank you, Andy. Andy, our stat man here. I'm lost once we get to 20. 21, and I'm lost. There's the Homestead student section once again. Well represented here tonight. Dom Bruno to kick off. This one will go to Lewis once again. Nick Lewis, check that, that is uh, not Lewis, but Nigel Cheeks takes it out to the 20 yard line on special teams, Anthony Chung and Cole Ellsbury, both downfield to make the tackle. With help from Xavier Smith. So they'll spot it just across the 20 yard line. Midway through our second quarter. A pair of touchdowns here in this second frame by Homestead. They take their first lead here. It's 
Cheeks around the left side. Brought down high, breaks a tackle, still on his feet. Forward progress to the 30 yard line. Good strong run by Nigel Cheeks, brought down by Colin McGinley. Yeah, a solid 5'9", 185 pounds, senior. Good gain of nine there. It took five Highlanders to finally get him down. So second and one. Well, mix up in the backfield messed up the timing, but they still get the first down out to the 35 yard line. Dom Bartoloni there on the carry, brought down by Rauschstein and McGinley. So another goodwill first down for the Blue Dukes here. Yeah, Bartolone, their you know, leading rusher on the year, getting to that 540 mark, trying to see if they can keep this ball moving. So maybe, you know, they want to get that defense back on the field. Cheeks, nothing there. Gets back to the line of scrimmage. Boy, that was all Cheeks grinding that out from what would have been a five yard loss into about a six yard gain. Colin McGinley, his sixth tackle, making the stop. Yeah, good example of Wana. Mm -hmm. You wanna? You gotta. Second down four from the 41. In motion goes Na. Inside handoff. Cheeks again. Close to another first down. Miles Kelly brought him down. He's getting a load here. Nigel Cheeks returning the kickoff and steady diet of handoffs here on this drive. Now Lewis checking in for Cheeks. You know, that takes a lot out of you, how much he's been fighting to get those extra yards. 60 yards rushing on the night for Cheeks. So Nick Lewis in there now. Spell a little bit of a breather. This is Bartolone again. And he is stacked up and driven back for no gain. McGinley and Ellsbury again on the stop. A little help from Perlstein. The nose tackle kind of collapsed that line. Could see Perlstein do a little slant move going that yep. way. Coach uh, Walter and Coach Rathgamp, in terms of running this offense, were worried about how that slanting defense of Homestead would affect their blocking schemes. Second down nine from their own 47 yard line. Showing blitz. It'll come, but Bartoloni gets the carry left side. Gets it out to him right at the midfield stripe. Anthony Chung. Very aggressive tackle there. Four stops tonight for Chung. So third and long once again here for the Blue Dukes. Approaching three minutes to go here in the half. The ball at midfield. Cheeks is back in there now in the backfield along with Bartoloni. And the Blue Dukes will take their second timeout. Taking too long. You could see the official starting to count down. We'll take a break. 12 7 Homestead on top of Whitefish Bay. It's our Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union.
Disney and the Justice Society are back and about to face their darkest adversaries yet. Suit up for an all new season of DC's Stargirl, Tuesdays at seven on CW18. Third and long, Cheeks gets the carry, tries to cut back and runs right back into the teeth of the defense. Good defense that time. Drew Wilson, along with Nick Walt, both there, will get another look. You can see that front seven shuffling along, keeping that line solid. Let's the linebackers come and fill in. Now the punting unit will come on. You can see Jake Walter trying to milk this clock as best he can here. May end up taking his final time out here. Miller and Chung back deep to receive for the Highlanders. And this is a good punt again. Miller will take on the run. Miller breaks it outside. This is Miller going down the far sideline. Tyler Miller. One man to beat. It's the punter, and they take him down at the 25. What a return. Sean Callahan brought him down, but Tyler Miller on the run taking that punt. And again, you could see that set up, Coach. They, as soon as he caught the ball, the lanes collapsed to the middle of the field. Yeah, yeah they didn't go down in their proper lanes, set that outside up for that return. Big return down to the 25 yard line. 45 yard re punt return. And it's Ullman, or check that Balistrieri on the play fake coming around the left edge. Balistrieri inside the 10, knocked out at the five. Callahan knocked him out, but a great play fake by Sal Balistrieri taking it around the left side. That fatigue, I think, yeah. has taken a toll on Whitefish Bay. First and goal from the four in the Salvation Army red zone. Rossman, the flanker, split out to the right. Rice, the tight end, near side. They'll give it to Ullman. Still on his feet. Ullman, close to the goal line, no signal. He stopped just shy of the goal line. Callahan and Brunner there for the tackle. Here comes a jumbo package, couple of the linebackers coming in to help lead the blocks. Under a minute to go here in this first half, a key moment here. The punt returned by Miller. And the run by Balistrieri, second and goal from the one. Ullman, he's going to be stacked up, try to go around the right side, and the Blue Dukes were ready. Henry Hisrick there, along with Jordan. So no gain, third and goal, late seconds of this first half. Toss to Ullman, trying to get to the pylon. He's going to be stopped short. What a play by Jamerson. It was Reed Jamerson, the nose tackle, who ended up making that play. And the clock runs out here. They did give him the timeout. There should be three seconds on the clock, I believe as Drake Zortman ran out of the field calling that timeout and he got it recognized just in time. Another look. That was Callahan, the corner that came around. Spotter Sean Raffaelli earning his $4,000 yes. check tonight. Great to have him back, by the way. We've missed him all year. You realize it took three different people to do this. 
That tells you how important you are, Mr. Raffaele. I can't kid Sean. He's a diehard Blackhawk fan, Chicago Blackhawk hockey fan. Gina, we might be in on some season tickets before it's all said and done. <laughs> Third and goal. And they punch it in for the touchdown. Ullman. Joe Ullman. And they will attempt the extra point here. All set up by the punt return by Tyler Miller. Down to the 15 yard line and the Balistrieri boot to the five and Ullman on third and goal punches it in for the Highlanders. Once again going for two here. False start, penalty here against the Highlanders. Now they will a kick, make a kick attempt here for the extra point. It'll be Don Bruno, the sophomore. Again, their regular kicker out with an injury. Ryan Quinn will hold on the snap from Drew Barranco. This one is up, and it is good. And so we hit halftime here at Lubar Stadium in Whitefish Bay. 19 unanswered by Homestead. They lead it by 12 as we head to our U.S. Cellular halftime report right after this on My24. Welcome back to our U.S. Cellular Halftime Report here on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. 19 unanswered by Homestead. They lead it here at the half, 19 to 7. Tonight we would like to highlight special scholar athletes during our U.S. Cellular Halftime Report. And we start off from Homestead High School, Drew Barranco. Drew has a 4.455 GPA. He is the 2021 starting center on the uh, football team. He's also a defensive lineman. Drew has achieved an Eagle Scout, a Service Above Self Award recipient, as well as lifeguarding at the pool. Drew volunteers at his grandparents' nursing home and is involved in numerous service opportunities at Lumen Christi Catholic Church. Coach Drake Zortman says Drew is an unbelievable young man 
and is very deserving of this nomination. He is the type of young person we should all strive to be around. He makes everyone around him better, teammates and coaches. And from Whitefish Bay High School tonight, Kate Graham. Kate carries a 3.954 GPA and participates in swim and dive, gymnastics, cross country, and soccer. She has eight athletic letters so far. Kate finished sixth at last year's state diving championships and has broken a school diving record in 2021. She was a member of state championship winning gymnastic teams in 2018 and 2020, and she has competed at the state meet the past three years. In track, she qualified for state as part of the 4x400 relay team. And in soccer, Kate was part of the state runner-up in 2019. She participates in the Bay Gives Back Service Club, helping with food drives, blood drives, and holiday present drives, and is part of the application service project. So congratulations to both of these scholar athletes tonight and to all of our scholar athletes doing great things both in school and through athletics. Let's head to the sideline and Mike McGivern. So guys, our partners at Landmark Credit Union are proud to serve and support our local communities. And tonight, we are just so honored to recognize an individual who has consistently, consistently shown the support for athletics here at Whitefish Bay High School. At this time, I'm so proud to introduce the Landmark Credit Union booster of the game, he is Kurt Smith. As a token of Landmark's appreciation, we have a nice gift for Kurt, and we will give a check for $500 to the Booster Club here at Whitefish Bay High School so that others like you can continue the support that they do and give to Booster Clubs throughout our area and support our student athletes. On behalf of everyone at Lake Landmark Credit Union, Kurt, we want to thank you. So a graduate from Whitefish Bay High School, man, a boy can't come home, right? Oh, absolutely, he can come home. This is amazing. What a great game. Homestead, Whitefish Bay, awesome rivalry, North Shore. Unbelievable, terrific. Can't wait for the second half. Hey, Kirk, can I ask you, look, I think for what you do for the Booster Club, I think there's a servant leadership heart part of that. And I'm wondering where that came from for you. Well, actually, my wife is the true leader and I follow her but it's terrific it, it, it's really fun being a part of the community and helping people enjoy whitefish Bay sports look I love the fact Kurt that you and your wife do this and give back to these kids and these schools or these kids at this school in this school through athletics I think it's really important that people like you continue to do that so landmark credit union we thank you Thank you. We appreciate Landmark Credit Union and everything you give to our schools. That's excellent. You know what, Kurt Smith, he's a Whitefish Bay boy doing really good things here in Whitefish Bay. Back to you, boys. Mike, thank you, and thank you again to Landmark Credit Union, part of our sponsorship this year on Friday Night Rivals. 19-7, Homestead on top of Whitefish Bay, back with more of our U.S. Cellular Halftime Report when we return to Whitefish Bay High School.
Welcome back to Whitefish Bay High School and the U.S. Cellular Halftime Report here on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. It's time now for our United States Marine Corps interview and back downstairs to Mike McGivern. Hey guys, I'm here with Sergeant Jordan Rosa. He's a Long Island guy, but he likes the cheese curds here in Wisconsin for sure. He joined when he was 19, went to school for a year, decided that wasn't for him, and he decided to serve. And I thank you so much, Jordan. Thank you for serving. Thank you so much. Hey, why is it important for you and the Marines to be in this kind of atmosphere, talking to 17, 18 year old kids that are starting to make a decision on what they want to do with their life? Uh, we just out here, you know, just letting everybody know the options that they have for, you know, after high school, whether it is college, um, whether it's trades or military service as well, how we can assist them, you know, set themselves up uh, for success in the future. Jordan, your parents must be so proud. They just must be really proud. I've got to believe they're walking around Long Island talking about their son a lot. Uh, yes, my mother served 10 years in the Marine Corps and biological father as well, so, you know, it runs in the blood. Hey, uh, last question, toughest part. Was it the first uh, first few months of the Marine Corps? Uh, first two weeks of boot camp, just getting used to the schedule, waking up early, uh, and getting the day started moving. Did, were you ready for it? Did, yeah, you, you don't know what you don't know. I'm just wondering if you're ready for that. Um, it was it was tough at the beginning to get ready for it mentally, but uh, once I got you know my feet underneath me, uh, it was smooth sailing from there. Hey Jordan, we thank you so much for your service, and uh, like your parents, we're really proud of you as well. Keep doing what you're doing. Thank you so much, sir. You bet. Boys, back to you. Mike, thank you very much. All of us at My24 in the high school football community lost a great man this past week. Eddie Bauman passed away at the age of 69. He was a longtime assistant coach. Matter of fact, coached with his two best friends, Bill Young and Greg Gamalski, from 1979 to present at Catholic Memorial High School. All of us here with My24 High School Sports and the high school sport community mourn the loss of Coach Eddie and prayers and condolences to the Bauman family. Yeah, Chief Bauman, you know, a fantastic career in law enforcement and uh, well known. And uh, Catholic Memorial didn't just lose a coach, lost a friend to so many of the people there. High school football lost a great friend as well. Back with more of our U.S. Cellular Halftime Report when we return to Whitefish Bay after this.
U.S. Cellular Halftime Report continues here on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. 19 unanswered points by Homestead. They lead at 19-7, but it was really Whitefish Bay that had the early momentum getting into this contest tonight as we'll take a look at our highlights this evening. Jack now got the thing started for Whitefish Bay on their opening drive. Their first possession punched it in, 7-0 Whitefish Bay, but the turning point right here. Unfortunately, it wasn't able to control that ball right away. Turned it over to Homestead. And then Balistrieri threw a strike to Tyler Miller. Put it up where he could get it, and he did for the touchdown. Extra point was missed, 7-6 at that point, and then Ullman took over for Homestead. So I'm utilizing that track speed going down the sideline. There's Jack Naw again, once again. Then Balistrieri, the quarterback, fighting off a tackle. Gets it in, it's 12-7 at that point. The try for two was no good. Then the punt return here by Miller, setting up that final touchdown drive. Right, they lost control of their lanes, covering that kickoff, set up this third touchdown. And that set up the touchdown run by Ullman, 19 to seven, 19 unanswered by Homestead. Let's head back downstairs to Mike McGivern and the folks from Landmark. So guys, I let Kurt Smith just kind of walk away before we gave him this $500 <laughs> check. And uh, I apologize for that. How cool is this that we do this each week, being able to give $500 to guys like Kurt Smith? This is really cool. Uh, we're here for the community, so this is good for us and also for Lama Credit Union and our community here that we serve. We really appreciate what you do for the booster clubs. Hey, Kurt, I think this is it. I'm not going to need you anymore unless I need you next week. Uh, I'll be there. I'll be there. Let me know what city, what town. I'm rooting all the way. Hey, I got a new best friend, Kurt Smith. <laughs> Back to you, boys. Kurt, Mike, and everybody with Landmark, thank you very much. We'll take our break. Second half coming your way. Whitefish Bay will get the kickoff when we return to Whitefish Bay High School. And welcome back, getting set for our second half here tonight. 19-7, Homestead on top of Whitefish Bay. 
And the Blue Dukes will get this second half kickoff to get things going, and they've got to find some momentum. They had it early, but you could kind of see that slide the other way and get wore down as that second quarter went on. Yeah, they've got to regain that energy. Uh, you know, they've started fast throughout the year, and conversely, Homestead has been outscored during the first quarter, but both teams have had strong second halves throughout the year. You're going to look at Jake Walter, the head coach for Whitefish Bay. Been around a long time with this program. Blue Duke's ball here to get things started. Kicking it off for Homestead will be Dom Bruno. And our kickoffs brought to you by the Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Coalition or MixApp. Again, we thank them for their sponsorship again this year. And it's cooled off just a little bit here. Temperatures have slid back into the upper 60s now and just a very light breeze out of the north northwest will aid this kick by Bruno. Nick Lewis and Nigel Cheeks are deep. And Bruno to Cheeks at the five. Up the middle, cuts it back at the 20, runs into a wall at the 25 and goes down there. First one there was Miles Kelly on special teams to make the first contact. And so the Blue Dukes will have it first and 10, just shy of their own 25 yard line. What do they need to do here to kind of get back into this coach? Well, I think they've got to see if they can maybe open up a little bit of a passing game so they can get the front seven to loosen up a little bit. And uh, they've talked about whether they'll do some boot action, some rollout, maybe try to do some flood patterns. Well, they're going to start this drive inside their own 13. After the whistle, there was an unsportsmanlike conduct penalty assessed to Whitefish Bay. So they will start this drive inside their own 15-yard line. And this is Cheeks. Turning the corner, got to the 15 and driven straight back. Colin McGinley now, eight tackles tonight for McGinley. He's coming up from that strong safety position, filling it, he's seeing those down blocks, kick out and he sees that gap, he comes up and fills it. Gain of three, second and seven coming up. Wells, Luke Wells, the quarterback. Comes to the sideline to get the play and then takes it into the huddle. Now in motion, they'll give to Bartoloni and he'll take it to the 20. It's about three, maybe four. Braverman was there along with McGinley once again. Hate to Bra say, say this early in the third quarter, here's a key play. Mm. Need a first down, they've got to keep the ball, gain that momentum. Yeah. Braverman who made that stop came up with that fumble recovery that started the scoring spree for Homestead in that second quarter. Third and two, just across the 21 yard line. I'm not sure, it's close. Drew Wilson stepped into that gap and made the play and stops him shy of the first down marker. And I think the officials wanna bring the chains in to take a look. I think Coach Walters already made his decision. We saw him talk to his quarterback, Luke Wells, and I think he already said, we're going for it. This one's going to be just short. By half a link. Half a link. 
Yeah. They do like the NFL, don't they? Take the credit card out and try and measure it out with the, the thin card. What's in your wallet? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, they're gonna. Oh. Yeah, they're gonna give it fourth down. It's it was short. Yep. That's what he's. Well, with predominantly senior offensive line, they're gonna go for it here. Fourth and inches, and Wells on the quarterback keep and whistle stop play. sure what's going on here with the officials. This is like the third time tonight that they've stopped play in the middle. And I'm not sure if the, the official's not putting the ball in play and they're snapping before that. We'll try it again. And this time on the second effort, Wells on the keep. Extends the drive. Luke Wells just took a little sidestep, saw the seam, shot through it. So a Goodwill first down for the Blue Dukes. Again, first down is brought to you by Goodwill. Shop Goodwill, sustainable back to school, shopping for less. From the 25, Wells drops back, wants to loft one down the sideline, and his receiver couldn't track it down. That was Camarion Ivory, the wide receiver here on the near side, the intended target. He had three receptions last week for 41 yards and a touchdown against Nicolay. The passing is not a big part of the offense on the season. They've only passed 28 times and run the ball 150. Hmm. Second and 10 from the 25. First possession, second half. Blue Dukes taking the second half kickoff here. Cheeks has some blockers in front, cuts it back inside the 30, out to the 35 yard line. They put that foot down and cut back and it was Ellsbury and McGinley finally get them down, but nice cutback move by Cheeks. See number 61, Joe Stockwell, the left guard, pulling through that hole. Coming back to the side with Joe Brunner and Nick Bakina, 6'2", 200-pound sophomore. Moves it out to the 35-yard line, first and 10 there. Nah in motion. Bartoloni takes it to the 37 yard line for a pickup of two. Frostein and Braverman both there. Second and seven upcoming here for the Blue Dukes. That middle of that Homestead defense is tough. You've mm -hmm. got to get slightly outside that tackle hole, you know, get that end turned out, get the tackle blocked down. Yeah, Prostein, a second team all-conference player a year ago. Very good wrestler, and he uses those hands well. Great leverage. Well, come around in the pull here to now, and Na is going to be stopped in the backfield for a loss. Na, nowhere to go. Hartlieb was there along with Nick Walt. Mark Hartlieb, that's his third tackle tonight. Good job again up front of moving up the field rather than trying to circle around. Just throw that, move that line of scrimmage back three or four yards. Matt Wolf thinks that front seven that he has is very solid. Mm -hmm. Third and 10. Wants to throw back near side. Catch is made to the 45 right at the stick. Should be enough for a first down. Amarian Ivory with the reception, Nick Wolt. Takes him to the boundary. Nicely thrown ball by Luke Wells. Got his shoulders square. 
Scott put it in the spot where Ivory could make the catch, the 6'3 senior for the Blue Dukes. As we mentioned earlier, once again, they want him rolling out. To try to get outside so now the pocket doesn't collapse. Gain of 11, first and 10, just across the 45. Cheeks trying to pick his way around the left side. He'll get three. That's about it. Out to about the 47 yard line. Brought down by Anthony Chung. That's his fifth tackle tonight. Whitefish Bay with a five minute drive going here in this opening possession to start the second half. Ivory the split end here to the near side. This time they'll work it from the gun. Pass rush on, gets it away, it's thrown low and incomplete. Again, coming back looking for Ivory, looked like a back shoulder attempt that time, trying to back shoulder throw and Crowley was there in coverage. Once again, there seems a little confusion as to where they're supposed to be aligned for Whitefish Bay. Another critical third down here, third and long, just short of midfield. Cheeks and Bartoloni in the backfield. Trouble for Wells being flushed out, throws it, it's tipped at the line of scrimmage, knocked down incomplete. Looked like it was Chung who got a hand on it, knocked it down. Again, looking for the running back Bartoloni out of the backfield, but Chung get in there and swatted that one down. Well, Chung, a starter for the baseball team last year on the basketball team. Good chase by Drew Wilson, who flushed Wells out of that pocket, forced him to throw on the run. Miller, who had that 47 yard return in the first half. Back to receive this punt. Fair catch signaled for and in traffic, balls on the turf. It's loose at the 30 yard line. It's gonna be a tough catch with making the fair catch in traffic. And Whitefish Bay has the football. Michael Strakansky makes the recovery on special teams for the Blue Dukes. Now let's see if this is the momentum Whitefish Bay looking for here. See if they can get energized off that turnover. They'll spot it at the 29, one more look. Chung was coming up to signal the fair catch into traffic and may have taken his eye off that ball just momentarily and a turnover for the Blue Dukes here as they get a takeaway and are set up at the 29. Wells from the gun. Lofts it downfield and it's well overthrown incomplete. Again, looking for Michael Strakansky out there, the wide receiver. So second and 10 from the 29. We're midway through our third quarter. Break here for the Blue Dukes, recovering the Chung fumble at the 29. Marion Ivory will line up here to the near side as the wide receiver. Single wing and they'll pitch it to Bartoloni. He takes it inside the 30. And that's about it, back to the line of scrimmage. Prunskis there to make the stop. Aiden Prunskis on that other left defensive end. Kind of his breakout game against Slinger last week, the six foot, 215 pound junior. You know, talking with Matt Wolf, he thought that was his 
game, he start, things started to come into focus for him a little bit better. Instead of waiting to react, he was reacting immediately to the plays. Yeah, all of a sudden the light went on. Mm -hmm. Caught it. Third and 10 from the 29. Under pressure, gets away. On the scramble, and it'll be brought down from behind inside the 25 yard line. Cole Ellsbury able to take Luke Wells down short of the first down. Bring up a fourth and about three here. One more look. Well, they really need a touchdown here, a field goal. In the scheme of things, this isn't going to do them as much good. You recall they converted on fourth down earlier on this drive, deep in their own territory on a fourth and inches. Paul Rathkamp, the offensive coordinator for Jake Walter. See if Matt Wolf brings a linebacker this time. They do. Try a screen pass. Complete Bartoloni, and he's going to be stopped short of the first down. Good reaction by the Homestead defense. Or try that screen, let him flush through, and good recovery as Nick Wolt made the tackle along with McGinley. McGinley now in double digits, 12 stops tonight for McGinley. Good call by Whitefish Bay in terms of a play, just good execution on defense by the Hoffenlanders. We'll take a break. 19-7, Homestead on top of Whitefish Bay. A good one here on the Heiser Automotive Group. Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Kara and the Super Friends are reunited and stronger than ever in their resolve to protect National City. The final episodes of Supergirl take flight Tuesdays at 8 on CW18. Ullman with the carry following the fourth down stop by the Highlander defense. Joe Brunner there to make the stop. Going both ways tonight, right tackle and defensive end. Gain of six sets up second and four for the Highlanders. Holman again left side. He'll get the first down just across the 33 yard line. Moves the chains brought down by Jamerson. So another Goodwill first down, this time for the Highlanders out near the 34 yard line. This time they'll go with the single back, Ullman in the backfield. Try up the middle, nothing there. Got back maybe a yard or two. Henry Hisrick there, the senior. Second and long. That's a down that the Highlanders have not been in too much tonight. No. Second and long. They've had the second and four, second and five most of the night. Stay ahead of the chains mm. when you're using Ullman. This time from the pistol. Balistrieri. 
Going to keep it. Trying to get to the edge. Can't get around, and he's chased down and brought down. They have lost a yard. Jamerson there to make the stop. Again, very active. He plays that nose guard spot, and boy, he... 5'11", 190, doesn't have the brawn, but he's got speed. He gets off that ball and watch him track down Balistrieri here. Right there. So a loss of one brings up third and seven. Again, Balistrieri working from the pistol. Play fake, wants to throw, now scrambling. And he stops shy of the first down. Hisrick again able to bring him down. One of the little things they've adjusted, they've taken Reed Jamerson and put him out at the end, try to disrupt things. So a loss of two brings up fourth. And a long eight. Will Van Lannen, the sophomore. Again, they're missing Sean West. Out with an injury. So he's doing most of the kicking tonight. Gets off a nice punt. Cheeks will let it bounce, takes a backward bounce. Highlanders will down it at the 36. 39 yard punt. Drew Barranco getting down there to down it. 127 to go here in the third. So the fumble and the stop on fourth down by the Highlanders and Blue Dukes get a chance here. Good field position here late in this third quarter. Got to see what Jake Walter and Paul Rathkamp, the offensive coordinator, dial up here. They've got to find some way to get a little bit more of a quick strike. I'll send Ivory here to the near side. Play action. Wells rolling right, going to just throw it away. Everything covered, and he was being flushed to the sideline. Try doing a little of that flood pattern we talked about, but well covered. Plus the sideline serves as your extra corner on that. Wisely threw it away, second down and 10. Here you get a look at Joe Brunner, the right tackle there, number 52. Headed to Madison next year. Paul Christen, that Badger offense, going to pick up a real, real nice find there. Second down and 10. Cheeks bounces it outside. Still on his feet, able to slip a couple of tackles and get a yard. That's about it. Braverman, who recovered the fumble earlier tonight, there to make the stop. And Perlstein there as well. What you have to notice, too, was free safety Anthony Chung, number six, coming up, forcing that play back to the inside to the other defenders. And they think Chung is just mm. someone special. He's a true three-sport athlete, football, baseball, and basketball. 4.44 GPA, mm. so no slouch anywhere. No. Blitz coming, they pick it up over the middle. Ivory with the catch. Inside the 45, down to the 41 yard line. 21 yard pickup and a first down. Miles Kelly there to make the tackle. One more look. That'll be a goodwill first down into Homestead territory at the Highlander 42, 19 yard pickup. Final seconds of this third quarter. Again, Luke Wells, low snap, but gets it to Cheeks. Circles inside, and Cheeks run down from behind. Cole Ellsbury got him down. Gain of nine, make it 10. And another first down. We'll get the sticks reset. And we'll count down this final, or this third quarter, I should say. The 
He'll get a playoff. Cheeks will be tackled in the backfield. Again, Ellsbury able to run him down as the third quarter expires. We will head to the fourth. A good one here at Whitefish Bay High School, but the Blue Dukes trail Homestead when we come back on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. As we begin the fourth, we want to remind you, coming up following our game tonight, stay tuned for our United States Marine Corps Player of the Game. That presentation brought to you by the United States Marine Corps. With Mike McGivern on the sideline, Terry Kelly and John Weiser up in the booth. Second and 11, Wells wants to throw the screen to Cheeks. He'll make the catch, but he'll be wrapped up again. Hartlieb here on this near side. Mark Hartlieb, the 6'1 senior, that's his third tackle tonight at that, that outside linebacker spot. Yeah, Matt Wolf was talking, you know, they, they looked at him as a tight end, but he also has been playing some defense. They figure he can maybe bounce back and forth between those two positions. Loss of two makes it third and 13 for the Blue Dukes. Blitz coming. Wells on the run has to get rid of it and throws it away here on the near sideline. Looked like it was intended for Na and Braverman with the pressure that time. Looks like they're going to keep the offense out here. As you see Jake Walter talking with his quarterback, Luke Wells. Fourth and 13 from the Homestead 35. Two receivers to the right, a wing here on the left side. Wells rolling right, now plants. Downfield and well overthrown looking for Ivory. He was double covered. Wilson was back there. And Homestead now will take over at their own 35-yard line. Mm. So now that rushing attack by Homestead might get to some use here now. You got a 19-7 lead, early fourth quarter. Looking for that drive to Put this game away, fumbled on the snap, and Balistrieri able to fall on it. My goodness. Saw him lined up in the double tight, mm -hmm. full T backfield. 
maybe getting ready to try to grind it. See if they stay in that formation this time now that they're behind the chain a little bit. Kind of short snap that one. Branco the center. Bellastreri having problems with it. A loss of two. Second down, 12 from the 33. We'll go on balance to the left here. Bellastreri, draw. We'll take it across the 35 out to the 37 yard line for a gain of four. Let's head downstairs to Mike McGivern. So guys on the Whitefish Bay sideline, talking about finishing their blocks, finishing a drive, and, and making sure that they continue to hit Homestead. On the other side, Homestead thinks they're wearing Whitefish Bay down a little bit. Back to you, boys. Yeah, I think that Terry and I, we've been talking about that up here. You could see that as this game has gone, gone on, that energy level on the Blue Duke side is been depleting. Play action, Ballastrieri tosses it out, and it's caught by Joe Rossman. And Rossman will break a tackle and take it to the house. Ballastrieri finding Rossman, threading the needle at its best. Pass was close to being picked no. off, just missed. Rossman makes Whitefish Bay pay for it. 63 yards and the touchdown. Second touchdown reception for Rossman this year. Thank you. And Bruno to kick the extra point. The snap by Barranco, the hold by Quinn, the kick is on the way, and it is good. 26 unanswered by Homestead here tonight. And they've taken control of this ball game. Let's take a pause here and we'll get a message from our friends at Mixapp. I'm gonna tell you three reasons why you should join the Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition. The first, we bring together resources, wisdoms, and talents across Milwaukee County to create a happier and healthier Milwaukee County community. Second, we prioritize policies, practice, and programs that address major substance use and misuse issues in our area. Third, we create a space for connection. We have among 30 plus organizations, partners, and community members a part of the MixApp Coalition. If you are wanting to make an impact and be a part of our coalition, please visit us at www.mixappcoalition.org. Alexandra, thank you. Nine and a half minutes to go. And Homestead in control of this one. 63 yard touchdown pass from Balistrieri to Rossman. And this will be Lewis. Bounces to the 20. Trying to get outside at the 25 and he'll be wrapped up shy of the 30 yard line. Tracking him down, Nick Walt. And now the Blue Dukes take some of that running attack away now because they're trailing by 19. Yeah, their biggest enemy now is the clock. Late getting the ball in here to start this drive for the Blue Dukes. from their own 30. Cheeks coming around the right side, breaks a tackle, bounces it across the 40 and takes it out to the 46 yard line. 16 yard run by Cheeks. It was Nick Walt making the tackle. It'll be a good will first down. Cheeks now over the 100 yard mark tonight. 18 carries for 105 yards. And a good will first down from the 46. Cheeks again, same play. This time got knocked off balance and only able to pick up a couple. 
Chung was there for Homestead, the free safety, and now an injury timeout here. And his cheeks slow to get up. So time has been called, 8.54 remaining here in this ball game. For Whitefish Bay, we'll take another look here before we, it's right there, I don't know if he got hit just above the hip. He had the wind knocked out of him. Hopefully that's not a serious injury there. Back up under his own power, and that's a good sign. Very good sign as he jogs back to the Whitefish Bay sideline. You know, he might have been cramping, too. I mean, he's mm -hmm. run almost as much sideways as he's gone straight ahead. He's been, you know, trying to cut, find that seam, get upfield. Works extremely hard. Second and eight from the 47. So Lewis will come in now, replacing Cheeks, Nick Lewis. He goes in motion. Bartoloni nowhere to go. Check that, Nate Burroughs, that's his first carry tonight. Prunskis was right there, collapsed that play. 5'8", 145 senior is Burroughs. Just his 17th carry of the year. Well, you look across that offensive front for Whitefish Bay, and obviously you got runner at 305, but then it goes 200, 210, 180, 190. A little size mismatch there for him. Third and long. Wells throws, and it's picked here on the near side. Picking it off is Jack Crowley. And he steps out of bounds at the 44 of the Blue of the Highlanders. Returns it back to his own 44-yard line, and we take another look. Intended for Ivory, and just read well by Crowley, who stepped in front, jumped the route, and made the pick. You know, Matt Wolf, Drake Zortman. You know, they said you know this poor kid got injured last year, the last game. You know, they're just so happy to see him get back to be able to get on the field. And Homestead sideline just helmet slaps all across for Crowley. That's how much he means to that team. First and 10 from the 45. Ullman able to break a tackle at the line of scrimmage and get a couple. Bartoloni there to make the stop. Bring up second and a long seven here. Now time the enemy. Homestead can milk this clock now. Ullman now over 100 yards rushing. Exactly 100 on 14 carries tonight. From the 42, second down and long. And a great play by the Whitefish Bay defense. That was Caleb Bowers getting in to blow up that play. Able to take Miller down. Yes, I think they brought the outside linebackers up there and try to blow them through the C gap. Try to take away that. Third and 12 here, a loss of five on that last play. And now timeout called here by Drake Zortman and Homestead. That back judge was starting to count down. So we will take a break, 6 16 to go, 26 7 in favor of Homestead on my 24.
Y24 is bringing the funny this fall. Catch full hours of Two and a Half Men, King of Queens, and Schitt's Creek. That's weeknights from 9 to midnight starting September 27th on My Place for Laughs, My24. Third and 12 from the 47. Balistrieri in trouble, and down he goes back at the 45-yard line. Joe Brunner with the sack. And so the Blue Dukes not done yet. Defense comes up big following the interception. Good see. Mm. Big Joe play off that block, yes. use his hands, make that tackle. Punting unit on for the Highlanders. Van Lannan, short punt again. This time it takes a favorable Homestead bounce, rolls all the way inside the 25 and dead at the 22. A couple of times tonight those short punts had that backward roll. Yeah, you know, it kind of looks like Homestead's going to be able to avoid having the kicking game give them some problems tonight. You know, even though it hasn't been perfect, it's, uh, you know, the fill-ins haven't made any major errors. Mm -hmm. From their own 22. What a nice play there by Anthony Chung. Able to take Na down. And again, the quickness up front to string that all the way out. Actually, lose a yard here. It'll bring up second and 11. Chung and McGinley, the two safeties tonight. What do they combined here for? 17 tackles tonight. Both read very quickly mm. and get up on that line of scrimmage and play that out. Second and 11. Cheeks gets stood up just across the 20 yard line. A little bit more manageable here. Third and about nine. McGinley again on the stop. So third and nine. Clock continues to roll, approaching four minutes to play. Fish Bay running out of time. Wells with time. Looking downfield, puts it up. A juggling catch. Did he make it? Yes, he did. Camarian Ivory with a nice grab. Well, that was a do or die catch. Crowley had him well covered. And one more look. Got enough control, kept his feet in to the 49 yard line. Excellent concentration. 27 yard pickup. First and 10 cheeks. Into Homestead territory. McGinley there to make the tackle again. 3.40 to go. Whitefish Bay has all three timeouts remaining. Facing a second and six here. Just under three and a half to play. Nice play there by Ivory to keep this drive moving. And a couple of nice receptions tonight. Showing blitz are the Highlanders. Cheeks, motors through, tries to bounce it outside to the 40, 35-30, and he's tackled down at the 30-yard line. Miles Kelly coming completely across the field to make the tackle. It'll be a 17-yard pickup and another goodwill first down. Cheeks is cramping up again once again. He's carried the ball a number of times, and it's run really hard. Mm. 
Lewis will replace him again. This time it's Callahan inside the 25. And about the 22, gain of about seven on the play. McGinley and Chung both there. First carry of the night for Sean Callahan. Five carries on the season coming in tonight, but one of them, a touchdown run. Second and three. Cheeks nowhere to go. Drew Wilson was there immediately. And again, I think Cheeks is still cramping. Not much left in the tank there for that young man. 131 yards tonight on 22 carries. And he's returned kickoff and punt return duties tonight. Third and five following that two yard loss. Gotta get rid of it quickly and does. Coming back near side and it's incomplete. Looking for Na, covered by Crowley and Kelly. You know, Whitefish Bay knows that the strength of their offense is running the ball. And once, you know, you fall behind like this, if you don't have the full passing attack, it's difficult. You know, you hang your hat on what you do best. And unfortunately, they, they fell behind and, you know, they just don't have that quick strike option. Minute 31. The flame flickering here, it'll be fourth and five. Gonna come back near side, ball in the air, looking for Ivory, and it's through his fingers incomplete. On the coverage was Jack Crowley. The ball goes back over to the Highlanders, and they will come out with the win here tonight. Well, both of these squads will be two and one mm. in the conference, depending on what Hartford does tonight. They'll if they win again, they'll be at the top of the standings. Yeah, Hartford is at Cedarburg tonight. That should be a, a good yeah. ball game. Well, we talked to both coaches about the fact, you know, North Shore Conference winner might have two losses for all you know. You know, it's going to be a. Next week, both squads get the West Bend teams. Talk about that in a moment. Ullman bounces across the 30 to the 33 yard line. Brought down by Na on defense. Whitefish Bay will be at West Bend East next Friday while West Bend West will travel to Mequon to take on Homestead. Both teams still have Hartford and Cedarburg left on their schedules as well. Mm -hmm. A little extracurricular, let's see. I have a replay on what happened after the play. Well, it looked like they had settled things. I'm not sure whether somebody said a magic word or what. I think it was on the, while well, they were on the ground, just the the extra iota, and you shouldn't, and the flag comes out. Again, this is a rivalry here between these two schools. They know it, and uh, I think since that last touchdown, make it 26-7, there's been a lot of chirping back and forth. I think Drake Zortman wants to be sure on who that call was on. Hey, you want like a little explanation because initially it looked like the mm -hmm. one guy was staying on top of his player. And officiating's a tough job and oftentimes you see what happens second, not what happens first. So Homestead heads home to West Bend West and they travel to Hartford on October 1st, hosting Cedarburg on the 8th and then wrap up their regular season at Nicolay. Whitefish Bay at West Bend East next week, hosting Cedarburg on the first, at Hartford on the seventh, and then they host Slinger to well, close out their the conference. Game. Yeah, some tough contests. And, you know, Whitefish Bay, as we talked, I think uh, mm. their lack of depth mm. bit them tonight. Next 
So this will go Homestead's way. They avenge that 28-0 shutout last fall in November. And that will do it here tonight. 26 unanswered points by the Highlanders as they pull away 26-7 tonight to pick up their fourth win of the season. They are now two and one in the conference. Whitefish Bay, three and two overall. They fall to two and one in conference play. We'll be back, we'll have our U.S. Marine Corps player of the game and our championship trophy presentation. All of that coming up in our post game when we return to Whitefish Bay High School on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Come in any of that stuff? Nah, nah. No, none of that stuff? All right. <laughs> hey, boys, remember, we are not cable, so we're going to watch our language. Here's what's going to happen. <laughs> U.S. Marine is going to be here. We're going to give him his award. I'll send it back to the booth. We'll have your head coach come up. We'll talk a few things with him. And then I'll say, hey, congratulations. Good luck next week. Y'all go crazy, but let me get out. All right? <laughs> All right. Well, Whitefish Bay got on the board first tonight on their first possession, opened up a 7-0 lead, but Homestead, 26 unanswered from that point on to roll to the victory tonight. They go to 4-1 on the season, 2-1 in conference play. Whitefish Bay now 3-2 and, and also 2-1 in conference. Hartford at Cedarburg tonight. Hartford, the other undefeated team in conference play. <coughs> Let's head down to Mike for a United States Marine Corps Player of the Game presentation. Hey guys, when, uh, when you're the starting quarterback at Homestead, a lot's expected from you. Sal Bal Balistrieri, awfully good game. Sal, congratulations, U.S. Marine Player of the Game. Thank you, thank you. I'd, I'd like to thank my offense and the, de and the defense, obviously. We came out to a rough uh, first quarter, first few drives on offense. Defense held it down the whole game. And offense really had to step it up, and we did. He, everyone on the team, whole team effort. Hey, Sal, real quick before we get to the U.S. Marine, um, when you get down seven nothing, and, and look, you took one on the chin last week. There was I looked in in, in you in the huddle, and that's your huddle. And uh, there was no doubt that you guys were going to make a good, make a game of it, come back, and and you just were like, relax, boys, we're good, we'll get this done. Yeah, I think we knew we could do it the whole game. We knew we wanted to win, and that's what had us in it the whole game. Homestead football. Yep, always. You know, um, Sir, Sergeant Moret, you, you got to think that when you're a, a starting quarterback and you got to multitask and you've got to lead men from the huddle, he's, he's perfect to be our U.S. Marine player of the game. Uh, definitely is. You know, uh, putting in hard work, leading the team, um, keeping them 
you know, in the game, especially when they were down in the first quarter. Um, so, you know, great win. You bet. You want to hand him that? That's awesome. Sal Balistrieri, U.S. Marine player of the game. Boys, back to you. Quite the night for Mr. Balistrieri tonight as he got the touchdown rushing tonight on 11 attempts rushing, one touchdown. He was three for three tonight. Two touchdowns. And two touchdown passes. Efficient, efficient. The, the backbreaker was uh, uh, the uh, Rossman touchdown that put them up 26 to seven. So congratulations to Sal Balistrieri, the junior quarterback, our United States Marine Corps player of the game. Once again, down to the sideline, our Champions Trophy presentation. Hey, uh, Drake, so first time they get the ball, they score. They don't score again. Man, obviously, defensively, this team played really well. And offensively, I thought you wore them out a little bit. Yeah, I give credit to Whitefish Bay. Boy, they're a talented team. Ooh, they're good. They're super talented. They played a great game. They came down and scored right away, first possession. Defense shored some things up. I can't tell you how great the D played. Get a couple turnovers after that first drive. Defense played great. Hey, you got to feel good about this quarterback. You know, he said, look, we, we, we understand. We got uh, put in a hole a little bit, 7 nothing." And uh, no problem. We're all right. We'll take care. Well, you know, we, we've been in that position before, um, and the, the kids responded nicely. I give, give, give the players a lot of credit. They, they played a, a heck of a ball game. Drake, last thing I asked you in our pregame interview, I said, look, you took one on the chin last week. How's the week of practice? You should focus. Our kids ready to play today. And uh, no doubt about that. Yeah, like, kids had a great prep week. We had to settle in a little bit tonight. Um, I thought they settled in nicely, but it goes back to studying. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, the kids did a great job getting ready for a really talented football team. I thought your boys wore them down a little bit. Uh, yeah, our guys, I thought we, we played hard. I think both teams played hard. I think it was a physical North Shore Conference battle. That's what you get. 100%. Here you go. Hey, nice job. Good luck next week. Way to go, boys. Somewhere in there, Drake Zortman has that trophy as Homestead celebrates a 26-7 victory over Whitefish Bay. Whitefish Bay's first conference loss in two years. Right, and, you know, quite a different game than last year's 28-0. Absolutely. We'll take a break, be back with a final word from Whitefish Bay High School when we return here on the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union. Final numbers tonight from this one, a Homestead victory, and uh, clearly 
things in their favor there. 332 total yards, holding Whitefish Bay to 249. And uh, Bay getting off on such a great start. And it's, it's just amazing, this Homestead team, that the, the splits, 47, outscored 47 to 36 in the first quarter. They outscore their opponents 44 to 8 in the fourth quarter. Uh, one of the statistics that's a little deceptive is you see 16 first downs for Bay, six for Homestead, but Homestead also had some big plays. Yeah. And that's what uh, Whitefish Bay was not able to capitalize on for themselves. So Homestead gets the victory 26-7, scoring 26 unanswered. Well, next week, the Heiser Automotive Group Friday Night Rivals presented by Landmark Credit Union takes us into Racine, one of the oldest, if not the oldest, high school football rivalries in the state of Wisconsin. The Horlick Rebels taking on the Racine Park Panthers. That's next Friday night, starting at 7 here on My24. And don't forget, each week our games repeat Saturday nights starting at 6. Big thank you to all our sponsors who bring Friday Night Rivals to you each week. The Heiser Automotive Group, Landmark Credit Union, U.S. Cellular, the Milwaukee County Substance Abuse Prevention Coalition, MixApp, the Salvation Army, the United States Marine Corps, and Goodwill. For our entire My24 crew, for Mike McGivern on the sideline and Terry Kelly up in the booth, John Weiser wishing you a very pleasant good evening from Whitefish Bay tonight. Homestead, the victory, 26-7 over Whitefish Bay High School. See you next week in Racine here on My24.